Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr. was born in Louisville, Kentucky on January 17, 1942. He grew up in the American South in times of segregation of public facilities. His father, Cassius Clay Sr., supported his wife and two sons by working as a painter. His mother, Odessa, worked as a household maid. When he was just 12, he decided to take up boxing as a sport. He was trained by a police officer named Joe Martin. He did well advancing through the amateur ranks. He won a gold medal at the 1960 Olympics in Rome. He then began his pro career, being sponsored by a group in Louisville of 11 rich white men. In his early days as a pro, Clay was more known for his charm and personality than his actual boxing skills. He was known for reading childlike poetry and saying phrases like, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He would even go around telling people he was the greatest before he even knew he was. He spoke it into existence. Even though his style said anything but the fact that he was great, he would hold his hands very low. He would back away from punches instead of moving from side to side and bobbing his head. And he did not have the punching power that people would want to see in a boxer, especially a pro. They said the people that Clay was beating up at the early parts of his career were people that were either in over age or past their prime or people that were just journeymen that people would put against people to build their records up. But all this changed on February 25th 1964, when Clay challenged then heavyweight champion of the world, Sonny Liston. Liston was in very high regards as a boxer and was very much known for his outstanding punching power, where he was knocking almost all of his opponents out. Clay was a heavy underdog in this match. And on this day, Cassius Clay pulled off one of the biggest upsets in not just boxing, but in sports history at the time, defeating Sonny Liston when Sonny could not make it out of his corner for the seventh round. Clay was the champ. And two days later, Clay announced that he was going under teaching for the nation of Islam. And on March 6, 1964, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave Cassius Clay his new name of Muhammad Ali. For the next three years, Ali dominated boxing. He even rematched Sonny Liston on May 25th, 1965. And in this match, he knocked him out in the very first round. On April 28th, 1967, due to his religious beliefs, Ali refused to be inducted in the United States Army. This was during the Vietnam War. One of his biggest defenders of his decision was then sports analyst Howard Cosell. Cosell agreed that Ali should not join the United States Army due to his religious beliefs. Ali was stripped of his title and precluded from boxing in America for over three and a half years. He was indicted and sentenced to prison for five years, but that was later overturned. His impact was growing on the American society due to him being willing to take a stance for what he believed in. Ali was a very vocal person. October of 1970, Ali was finally allowed to return to the ring. He challenged then heavyweight champion Joe Frazier and lost a close 15 round decision. After that loss though, Ali won 10 fights in a row. He then got his jaw broke in March of 1973 by Ken Norton en route to a split decision loss. He later avenged that loss to Ken Norton and Joe Frazier. On October 30th, 1974, 
Muhammad Ali challenged then current heavyweight champion, George Foreman in Zaire, Africa. It was known as the Rumble in the Jungle. He knocked out Foreman in the eighth round by using a tactic that they called the rope -a Now the rope -a was when Ali would lay up against the roads and allow you to punch yourself out. And once you punch yourself out and you were tired and you had no more energy, he would go in for the kill. And that's what he did to Foreman. I watched that. He then fought Joe Frazier again for their third fight, which was called the Thriller in Manila that was in the Philippines. He won a 15 round decision and retained his heavyweight championship. A few months later, he lost to Leon Spinks for his heavyweight championship. He regained it seven months later by beating Spinks and then he retired from boxing. But he came back two years later for two more fights in which he lost. One to Trevor Burbick and one to Larry Holmes. He then finally retired from boxing. When he retired from boxing, his record was 56 wins with five defeats. In the later years, Ali's physical condition was on decline. And then in 1996, Ali was chose to light the Olympic torch at the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia. It was a moment that would never be forgotten by anybody who witnessed it. I know I certainly won't forget. He was deservedly inducted in Boxing's Hall of Fame in 1990. And in 2005, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And on June 3rd, 2016, at the age of 74, Muhammad Ali passed away in Scottsdale, Arizona. So on this final day of Black History Month, we honor the greatest. He was one of the first people to speak things into existence. Like I said before, he was calling himself the greatest even before he knew he was. That's why I always tell my viewers, believing is half a being. Rest in peace, Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time. If you like anything I said in this video, hit the like button, subscribe button, leave a comment. And until next time, the Libra Man is out.